I'm gonna actually going to throw you guys all a curveball because Bruce and I spoke about this a little bit at San Diego Comic Con, and we, were, and we were talking about Comic Cons in general. And he says, he said, you know, he said, I never want to retire. He said, I want to die at a Comic Con. So how would you guys all like to die? <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear your death wish. Oh my God. Having <laughs> sex. <laughs> <laughs> Having great sex is how I would like to die. Die as I'm dragging Bruce's body out of a Comic Con <laughs> and just have a heart attack and fall. Right dragging my dead body out of a oh, Comic yeah, no, Con. No, 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 you're dead. You're dead. You're dead. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, I won't be there. I'll be having sex. <laughs> <laughs> And then dying. <laughs> and dying at the same time. Uh, eating a giant bowl of spaghetti. Narrowly losing a shark fight. What? Like getting really close. What? Like I almost so beat it. So you're aware? You thought of this? Being attacked by a shark? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. I've thought, I've, I've thought, thought about yeah. this a lot. Yeah. 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 You're focusing on the fight and not the actual being eaten by a shark part too. Almost eaten. Yeah. Well, no, I I do get eaten. No, you do. I, 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 you eventually oh, get eaten. Oh. Yeah. But it looks like he might make. It. That's yeah. like you all. No, then you die of like, like a and like a your appendix first. Well, wait a second. <laughs> the question was how you wanted to die. That's how you want to die. That close. Oh, that to close. Winning. You don't really want to um, die. To win, no, to winning the fight. And yeah. then you were aware that you're, you're, you're fighting a shark. Yeah. It's a yeah. horrible thing. Yeah. Eye opening. I'm cool your with it. I love it. That's It'll all been worth it. Now that. that. no, that's okay. crazy. Yeah. So hysteria. <laughs> a lot of, <laughs> you know, a lot of shark so fights in hysteria. Uh, conversation. <laughs> um, David and Matthew, set this one up for us. You know, we know it's got a killer cast. We know it takes place in the 80s during Satanic Panic. Uh, what, tell us a little bit about the, the, the inspiration behind this one. For, with this one for me, um, I started writing it in 2019, and at that point in time, <clears throat> I kept feeling like something was changing in the world where facts started losing their meaning, they started losing their value, mm. and <clears throat> fear was often kind of at the root of that. Mm. Fear was often driving people to change facts into fake news into whatever it might be and then that would go get disseminated out into the world and completely change a lot of people's views on reality and that was really scary to me the fact that that was happening so clearly in front of us so looking back in history I felt like that was exactly what was happening in the 80s during the satanic panic hmm. I drew a very clear connection between those two time periods and then just we were kind of off to the races at that point David, I, I, I want to give you a shout out for a second. I mean, you, ha you have, I think, one of the most eclectic resumes in the industry <laughs> from Golden Girls to Dream On, Wings, Family Guy, Futurama, Star Trek. Uh, it's crazy. Thank you for all that, uh, all these gems you you've given us. Hooker. And T.J. Hooker. I, I didn't write for T.J. Oh, yeah. Okay, sorry. I just, <laughs> I just watched it. I didn't write. Um, but how, you know, how is Hysteria different from anything well, you've ever worked on? Well, I am also the, the co-writer of Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost. So I have some. And Scooby-Doo. And I also have a lot of really horrifying credits. So if there was <laughs> there was some. Uh, but for me, what I, what I really hooked into when I read Matt's pilot script was um, you're watching teenagers make really bad decisions. And mm. uh, I ha used to have teenagers, they're now adults, but and when you have a teenager, a, a horror movie plays in your head. Where are they going? What are they doing? And Matt really captured that in the pilot and then to, be, to get to be part of this project was just such a delight, obviously working with this cast, but to get mm. to explore these th those issues, but that is rooted in this, you know, teenage, teenagers and family dynamic that mm. I think is universal for everybody. For our illustrious cast members, can you guys tease a little bit about your characters and tell us why they kick ass? <laughs> I play a rational cop. I play a very trustworthy chief of police who you need to keep. There's got to be a center of this. There's got to be someone who's trying to make sense out of all this panic. And mm -hmm. uh, I share his that character sensibility. I don't really buy into a lot of this stuff either, so it's it's easy for me to play that. Mm -hmm. But it makes it fun then when he starts to question himself. Uh, I play Linda Campbell, mm -hmm. a tip of the hat, mm -hmm. sir. Mm -hmm. um, he was a, you know, a mom in a small town. Uh, we've got one son. And he starts getting into heavy metal, which he thinks leads to Satanism. But then we suddenly realize maybe she is crazy or perhaps possessed we don't know so uh it takes a big twist it's not just like i don't just stand by the refrigerator going no 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 <laughs> you do way more than that yes. no 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 she, she stands no, by the window no. and she says that no. and, yes. 
We know yeah. you get dragged around by some, some some kind of supernatural force. We've seen that. We don't know. I mean, yeah. we know that it happens in the, but we have no idea if that's taking place in her head. Mm-hmm. Is that taking place in the world? I, you got to watch. I I play Tracy Whitehead, who is the lead drummer. <laughs> no, she is actually a very um, religious uh, fundamentalist. And she is a very protective mother of um, faith, played by the amazing Nikki Hahn. And she'll stop at nothing to protect her daughter. And she, people think she might be a little kooky in the town. I oh, think she's sure. great. I think she's just great. Bruce, why are you why are you so drawn to all things satanic? Uh, I'm not, sir. Uh, you, you, I, I think you are. I am not drawn to satanic. I was just written that way. Uh, honestly. Um, you know, in the early days, we decided to make a horror movie back in 1979 because they were cheap. Mm. And you didn't have to have any name actors. First Halloween, nobody knew Jamie Lee Curtis. Uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, nobody knew any of these people. They could wear street clothes, drive regular cars. Mm. So it didn't have to look like an Aaron Spelling show. We didn't, you know, so that was easy. And you could get them into drive ins. We yeah. still had drive ins back in the day. So that was the impetus to get in. Not that we were horror freaks. We were bigger fans of Three Stooges than mm-hmm. Satan. That tracks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and Julie, was your character was that, that the character's name? This was was this originally written as a reference to, to Bruce? I'm sorry you? to say that no, it was not. It was not. What? It was not. It I'm was sorry, not. Bruce. Uh, you should just go with it. <laughs> yeah, I I've told everybody it's a reference to Bruce. You're so. pl- in your in your. Yeah, it was actually. And you're playing it that way that. too. Oh, okay. uh, uh, Everything's about Bruce. When you're in fact, all in fact, world. that was that was the family name, and then yeah. we cast Bruce, and we had a moment yeah. where we were like, oh, do we have to change? Should we change it to the name? Jenkins family? Uh, yeah, but yeah, we, we yeah. didn't. We kept it. Nah. But there is there is an Evil Dead reference at least in the trailer. There's the book. Uh, yes, a, ref- a, a reference Absolutely, to a book yeah. found in human flesh, which much appreciated. How 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 would you guys like characterize the the, the tone of, of the series? It seems like it's it's dark, yeah. obviously horror elements, dramatic elements, comedic. It's how how, how do you characterize? When it? When we first pitched it, uh, initially the pitch was freaks and geeks and satanists. <laughs> so we're going with coming of age with horror thriller, all yeah. of that kind of stuff. So it mm-hmm. is going to be funny when it needs to be funny but it's also not going to let that humor get in the way of any kind of thrills or scares or anything like that if mm-hmm. anything the humor helps kind of buy, help you buy into all of the characters so that when they're put in these situations you really feel for them and you want mm-hmm. them to get out of it horror and humor often mix this mm-hmm. this guy right mm-hmm. here mm-hmm. but uh and and that it it gives you a little break from the tension but all the way through we wanted this to feel real there's a, mm-hmm. definitely a, a feeling of uh, a reference to 80s movies, but it does it, but it, there's also, uh, we want people to believe this actually happened in the 80s. And, mm-hmm. and that, that was always sort of... I think the approach right. is more real than yeah. camp. I don't yeah. think any of us are out there winking at yeah. that. Yeah. You know, yeah. We're pretty straight. Yeah. Yeah. I thought this actually did happen in the 80s. <laughs> this Some is not a true story? This exact story? <laughs> 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 the satanic panic was real, though. Yes. It was, yeah, real. Yeah, it was, it was yeah. real. And most of what happens in this series is real. Sure, if that's the way you but. want to do it. <laughs> sure. Once you interpret yeah. that, if that's your jam, okay. you go with that. Sure.